So what do you think? You're just going to wait down here until your class starts? It's not going to be too long. No way. Boring. kind of hungry, Dad. Oh, it's not boring, okay? It's only boring when Mr. Riley goes off on one of his agendas, which we don't let happen too often, so. Oh, and there's donuts. Dad, a church committee meeting? <sighs> wait, donuts? Here we go. See? What did I tell you? Glenda, the donut lady. Also, the choir lady and the fruit and vegetable lady, and the quilt lady, and the coffee lady. Hey, Andrea. Hi, Mrs. Beasley. Oh. Now, what brings you around? I'm here for acolyte training. My mom's upstairs with the other kids. Oh, great. Now, have you been an acolyte before? No, this is my first time, but it sounds pretty cool. Dad, I'll wait upstairs. Whoa, whoa, whoa. you're gonna go upstairs? You're, you're gonna miss the, the, the weekly donut extravaganza. Thanks. Did I hear donuts and extravaganzas? Those are two of my favorite things. Hey, Chuck. Hey, where are you heading? Acolyte training. Acolyte training. Where soon the student will become the master. Kisses. Daniel, <laughs> please, some manners. Mm, adults these days. Kids. Teach them, man. Huh? There's a bunch up in the fellowship hall right now I don't even uh, recognize, terrorizing the place. If they mess up my newly waxed floor. Terrorizing. Pfft. Yeah. Terrorizing, running around, making a mess up that you did this. You did this. Did you guys see those kids upstairs running around just terrorizing the place? Hmm? See? I haven't seen that in so long. It's pretty awesome, right? No. Park Grove Community Church has lost its pastor and its way. And is closing its doors unless it reinvents itself, despite itself, with the help of Chuck. The Committee. Mr. Riley, th those kids, they're here for acolyte training, so. Uh, yeah, I saw Andrea. I remember being an acolyte. Uh, probably uh, still should be still a kid. Whoa, well, you don't have to be a kid to be an acolyte, do you? Well, wasn't there a Chuck Knows Church episode about this? Probably. Well, who else is going to do it? Well, for the longest time, we didn't have enough children around, even to be acolytes. I remember that. Some Sundays, I had to do it because we didn't have any kids. More children around now, though. Mm -hmm. I like it. I'm just impressed kids still want to be acolytes. You're right. We do have a few new families. I hope they stay. <gasps> I wonder if they can sing. I don't even recognize most of these kids. Well, did you stop to introduce yourself, to say hello? What do you mean? I had a meeting to attend, and let's get started. Hey guys, Dad, can I have some money? A few of us want to get something to eat next door. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Just, you know, make sure you're back in time for your acolyte thing. Oh, and your mom better be going with you. I got it. I'm good. Hi, Andrea. Hey, Andrea, can you hold on a moment? You happy? I think I scared her or something. Can we talk to you real quick? Dad? Dad? Yeah, I mean, that's fine. You've still got time. I'll just let your mom know that you're down here. Okay, well, what, what's going on? Well, I'm, just, I'm just thinking. Which is always uh, dangerous. Thank you. BTW. Thank you for, for that. Um, as a faith community, we are called to serve children, right? Okay, well, where are you going with this? Now, Andrea, I know you probably Please. think committee meeting is kind of boring. <laughs> no, Ted says you're always having a lot of fun and goofing off. Really? Goofing off. Well, in, in a good way, though. I mean, guys, she did come down here once and find me in a Whoville wig. You remember that, honey? The, the, the Dr. Seuss debacle we talked about? Okay, I, I just think in light of our special guest, it might behoove us to, I don't know, take inventory. Let's check in, right, and see how we are doing in our ministry for children and their families. Not a bad idea. Honey, grab a seat. Huh? Maybe you can answer some questions for us. Hmm? You are a kid, right? Good one, Dad. No, I, what I meant was... It, I think what your dad means is that too often we think we know what the families and children in our community need. But we don't. I mean, let's be honest. But if we took the time to get to know them, to talk to them... And not just the kids at our church. We would have a much better chance of... Uh, a, a much better idea of how to intentionally be the hands and feet of Christ in this community. Intentionally, hands and feet? Uh, yeah, hands and, hands and feet, you know, for traveling and, and reaching beyond the church building. We would have a much better idea since you are spiritually part of this mm -hmm. church and you live in this community. So, Andrea, 
What do you think? What are you talking about? Yes, I, I get it. I'm off to a brilliant start with Andrea. But you know, our church is, is graying. I mean, we're getting older. And we don't always speak on the same wavelength as, as the children. Too much church speak, I guess. But you know, that doesn't mean we shouldn't keep trying. You know, as a church, we are called to minister to the needs of all children and their families. Okay, so when you think about it, children today aren't that much different than when we were kids, right? <clears throat> I'm sorry, that's funny. Well, what's so different? We have cooler things. Okay, like what? Like, like our phones aren't stuck to the wall. Touche. Okay, it's true. The entire world is at their fingertips now. Digital natives, that's what kids are these days. Digital natives? What's that mean? I, I'm not sure, I, I heard it someplace. The interaction with the community may look entirely different, but children today still need and desire that community, don't they? Don't they? Maybe, I don't know what you mean. Growing up in this uh, frenetic, fast-paced world, are we, are we truly offering them a community that surrounds them with, with love and forgiveness? Well, how else are they going to learn to trust, to, to grow in their relationship with God? Do you like coming to church, Andrea? It's okay, honey. Just, just answer honestly. Do you like the worship service? How about the music? Honestly, it's kind of boring. I'm with you. I've been saying worship needs to be more accessible to everyone, including children. By including children. Uh, in leading worship. As acolytes and musicians. That would be cool. Even greeters or liturgists. What's a liturgist? Look, are, are we even getting close to doing any of this? Well, I'm not gonna lie to you, buddy. We got a lot of work to do. Well, we can't get to all that unless we're first providing an environment that is child-friendly. Whoa, 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 hey, hey. What is not child-friendly about our church? Huh? It's okay, honey. He's, he's really a nice guy. You just got to get to know him first. Don't we have to have children first before we can do anything with them? You know, what is this? The, the, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? Huh? Well, look, it's, it's probably not the most perfect example of a rhetorical question, but you get the point. Is the chicken a rooster or a hen? Kids these days are too busy playing baseball on Sunday or soccer or staring at their phone while they drink their energy drinks. How are we supposed to compete with that? Well, we can't compete with that. And why should we? I mean, all these sports programs. D Disney this and theme parks that. It's all just a, a bunch of fun and entertainment. And that's not the point of church, is it? We are, are in the, the business of faith, not the business of entertainment. We can't forget who we are. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that we can't have programming that's both fun and entertaining for our children. I mean, does it? Of course not. But, but first, we need to take a look at our congregation, find out what are our gifts, right? What can we do? And, and what are the needs of our community? We can't out-entertain Disney, but we can out-relationship them. We can have vacation Bible school, just like we used to. No, no, we don't, we don't have enough children for vacation Bible school. All right, well, Mr. Riley, a few moments ago, you said we had a bunch of kids upstairs. Yeah. Yeah. Well, three's a bunch, okay? There was only three? Well, in presence, it was like millions, okay? Okay, and well, it's I not had... just for the children at our church. Vacation Bible School is for the entire community, so. Good point. Thank you. You must become like a child. What's that passage? I know that one. Oh, think like a child, act like a child. That could be fun and entertaining. And disastrous. Maybe it could be refreshing. Might even be innovative. Loving. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Just before disastrous. Like the inmates running the asylum. <laughs> All right, and, and what should happen if an idea fails? We learn from our failures. Didn't we talk about that? Is this it? Mark chapter 10? People were bringing children to Jesus so that he would bless them, but the disciples scolded them. What? 
What? You comparing me to a disciple? Great. Thank you very much. I appreciate the compliment. Please move on. When Jesus saw this, he grew angry and said to them, Allow the children to come to me. Don't forbid them, because God's kingdom belongs to people like these children. I assure you that whoever doesn't welcome God's kingdom like a child will never enter it. Then he hugged the inmates and blessed them. What, what, what version is that? Yeah, I read this story online about this first grader, Peter Larson, who camped outside to raise awareness for homeless people. A first grader. There you have it. It doesn't matter how young you are, you can still be the hands and the feet of Jesus. Oh, hands and feet. I get it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I want to do something like that. Well, why don't you, honey? How? Exactly. Is our church giving children uh, the support, the right direction to be in ministry like this first grader, Peter Larson, Lake Andrea wants to be? It's like we're just telling them, enjoy Sunday school and come back next week. Andrea. Yours is the most important voice in this meeting today. And guys, we, we have to listen to her. We have to remember what she said. I want to do something like that, right? Yeah, it's pretty cool helping others. Sounds like hospitality. Our purpose. Engaging our community. These things keep coming up again and again, don't they? H-O-P-E, hope. Remember that? Hospitality, offering Christ, purpose engagement. I remember it's on my fridge at home. Well, I guess we're going to need a lot more than three kids then. Poor Mr. Riley. Always the naysayer. I say build it and they will come. That might not be biblical, but I, th I think you get the idea. Engage with children and families. Refrain from judging. And, and all children, not just the children in our churches. By volunteering or participating in the community in other ways to serve families, we really do become the hands and feet of Christ. And we become an example for all children. We have to be patient. Developing trusting relationships with families looking for their church home takes time. We're talking about children here. I know. She's a good one. What do you think, Andrea? You want to help us with our agenda? I guess so. But I'm still hungry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I can. I mean, we've still got we, we've still got some time. I mean, we could all go grab a quick bite. But Andrea's buying. <laughs> oh, you're nice. All right, just right next door. That's a good idea. <clears throat> Mr. Riley, you want to bring the agenda? We can talk about it over there. Yeah. We're leaving behind perfectly good uh, carrots and donuts, but That's fine. I guess we can have those for dessert.